So, welcome back everyone to the next episode of the My Generation podcast. On today's episode, uh, we'll once again be revisiting the acting process with a focus on performance and preparing for theatre production. We spoke before to actress Eleanor Sutcliffe in episode 10 of the podcast, and then to Alara and James, who have roles within the Drama Society at Canterbury Christchurch University. Now we'll be going for a more boots-on-the-ground approach, um, straight into the performance and what it's like to be acting within theatre. Uh, and I'll be talking to Anna Begovic, who I met at the Drama Society. Welcome, Anna. Hello, Max. Um, I'm really glad I'm here. And thank you for inviting me. No worries. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Um, we're going to talk about the acting process. So uh, could we firstly just go over your background within theatre? Okay. Well, um, I kind of have interesting background because I started as a dancer um, when I was seven. Uh, but that kind of opened me to the world of the theatre. So um, I started dancing. And then one day, my dancing teacher invited me to puppet theatre to help actors with the movement but because one actor actress was ill they asked me also to act a few scenes and um, I had that experience and everyone was so lovely and I kind of thought wow I really enjoyed this and then later um, I started just to explore kind of different roles I would find something some text and I would start acting and dress up and all of that and uh, I applied for some kind of uh, competitions, uh, acting competitions, and uh, that's how it started, really. <laughs> so it's almost started by accident. You were just going along to help, and now you, you've got a whole sort of <laughs> career building off of it. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I guess if if you are meant to do something, then it will come to you. Sometimes it's like that, I think. Yeah. Uh, but you have to then put some effort. Yeah, you're in the yeah. sort of the right place at the right time. Yeah. And um, so how has that sort of developed onto being on the stage since then? Um, so then I started to, to go to drama group uh, back in Croatia. Um, so then we had like first performance. It was uh, ancient Greek performance. So I started to do it more seriously and to learn. Uh, then I started to go to different workshops. Um, so I always had my group, my drama group, uh, where I went. But then when I would see some people from different countries coming and leading acting workshops, then I would apply and I would go. I even went to Denmark uh, because of the acting workshop. <laughs> wow, so it took you all over the place and, and they were just workshops. And then in, with that group, did you put plays on? Uh, so it depends. So it, with my uh, drama group, which I actually changed from uh, one city into another. Uh, we did, we will always make performance. Uh, but then when it comes to workshops, they can be a week workshop or a um, few days. So then it depends what's the topic. Uh, for the Denmark one, uh, everyone actually uh, needed to prepare the poem, which uh, we needed to recite. So. Um, and then I developed my performance through the seven days in the in the theatre in Denmark, and that's been great. Yeah, that sounds like an amazing opportunity to sort of put your work on the stage in front of everyone. Uh, was it a great sort of networking experience? Yes, that's another part of it. Uh, whenever I go for these workshops, I always try to find people with whom I want to stay in touch with. Um, then here uh, as well, like uh, I have some interesting people at a course um, and we also put a lot of shows um, because yeah as a part of drama course um, but additionally I also went to National Youth Film Academy then in London and that was really good opportunity for network as well yeah so you, you get to network with people in uh, the sort of actors and directors as well is it important to be able to communicate with directors who may want you for projects as well Yes, uh, absolutely. It's um, it's important to be nice to people and uh, to really do your work well, and then that will give you more opportunities, I think. And even here with the film students, I'm so happy to be, be connected with some of them. And um, I acted in for, in the film last year for film students. Yeah. Um, and now one of the members uh, casted me for another film. So, yeah, that's, that's, for example, something 
here, uh, which shows us that it's Im- it's important to connect with people and to if you want more opportunities. And, and I yeah. asked James this question when we spoke okay. about the link between film and theatre. What, what are the main differences you'd say between the two different art forms? Mm-hmm. Um, well, um, first of all, theatre is in moment. That's, I think, the um, most important difference because uh, theatre is live moment. It is happening now, uh, but film... Uh, you always have another uh, another chance to do the scene, so and then people will actually watch it later. And then there is a big work uh, there for people who are editing and uh, all other roles which are involved in the film. Uh, while uh, when it's a theater, yes, um, we see live performance in the moment, um, but from from my point of view, this is more from spectators' point of view. From my point of view, as well, it's um, I feel like the film is more intimate and um, it's uh, the acting is not so big, like it's more naturalistic. While in the theater, sometimes you need to project the voice. Probably uh, James <laughs> a respond yeah. in similar way, uh, and you need to make a bigger gestures, especially if it's for the um, um, big audience yeah. so these are some of okay. and, and that, that's sort of the changes that happen physically within the performance on the stage but what about um, in the preparation because I imagine sort of preparing for a film mm-hmm. um, sort of the rehearsals actually shooting the film is probably quite different in, than in theatre when you get to work with the cast a lot more what, what are those differences like the, pre, mm-hmm. the pre-production uh, so um, then we also come to these uh, acting um, techniques and acting uh, kind of yeah uh, preparation and warm up activities. <laughs> so for the theater, um, yes, the preparation of the voice will be definitely different, and you will have to work, I would say, more and harder because um, uh, it's it's different media in a way like you that you have to prepare yourself your voice and body um if it's a theater in a certain way so as i mentioned before so you can project the voice so you can be loud enough um and um so your gestures can be good and your like movement on the on the stage um, and then there is a, uh, for example, like dress rehearsal in the in the space itself. So uh, you will adapt differently to the space in the theater and uh, when it's film. So, but another, um, there they have many connections because then there is always the this part, interesting part, when you are uh, trying to learn about your character, trying to, um, um, yes go in the mind of the character uh, do what you need to to explore the character um but uh, for the film as i said then it's to to if you have the partner to we work with someone so that's convincing and you are also practicing maybe in other way like have to make things smaller because if you're doing as i said for the theater everything will be bigger, like your expression. Uh, but the, for the film, you have to be able to make that intimacy, for example, if you like, believable or um, you shouldn't like overreact. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's something. And uh, then the awareness of the camera, like uh, you can't act in any way because um, um, a cam- camera needs to pick the right, the right thing and uh, from right uh, way. So if you are repeating the scene, if you are having action with it, then you have to be very much aware of it. So if I have this water, a bottle of water, and if I have, if I uh, bring it up in the scene, and then we will repeat again. I have to bring that bottle of uh, water the same way again, 
uh, in, because if we are using in, that in editing, like if we go from one scene to another, um, it has to be done in the same way, otherwise film will end up uh, and not making the sense. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. It's, it, they're very different processes. And, and you mentioned in there about um, learning about your character. Mm -hmm. What would you say your processes is like for when you're given a character? How do you go about unpacking mm -hmm. what it's like to be that person? So I usually try to use all this uh, knowledge and I always try to open myself to different techniques so I don't go just with one way and sometimes for one character something will work but for another it won't uh, but definitely Stanislavski uh, technique is one of the techniques I uh, really uh, find very helpful and it is um, and what's this to, technique? Yeah, uh, Stanislavski technique uh, is based on finding the objective of the character um, so what's the character motivation for, to do something so you um, that helps you to move from scene to scene or action to action because if you know why are you doing something then it's going to be believable um, and I also think of um, what can I find in my experience that I can use as well what are connections between me and the character or what is what is um, the gap so then I'm working on filling this gap and if I don't know something if the character is completely uh, the person out of my universe then I inform myself for example I played the mathematician I'm actually I'll, I'll share this I'm not good at math <laughs> um, but then I I did the research on uh, on maths for that even like I go really deeply in detail I want to um, I start to I try to do some things that my character does. Um, so I go very deeply in the research. Sometimes I do take a look how other actors did something just for inspiration, but I don't like to copy, of course. Yeah, so. Yeah, so it's all uh, sort of different little inspirations that you've got for, yeah, what it's like to look inside a character. And um, what was it like playing a character that, that you feel like you don't have the skill set for, so like a mathematician? Um, what was it like the research process so i i actually like i i was lucky to have met some people who are um very who are studying maths so i spoke with them as well and uh, i i was trying to i was curious i was trying to find out what is their lifestyle what are these people like um do they like to go out? Um, like every every little thing and daily things as well. Um, and then I was I wanted to remind myself of the process because now I'm as a drama student. It's not that I have to do um, like some higher maths or anything. So I actually uh, reminded myself. I took some books as well, and uh, uh, because I it was a process of working on on this and. Uh, being a mathematician was important part of uh, my character's life because it influenced uh, her to be uh, uh, very organized and precise. So um, then I was basically practicing this um, when I was when I was having these rehearsals. Okay, I'm I on the on the stage even I was. Uh, actually really doing the math that some actors don't go that far you don't have to you can pretend yeah. um, but I like to explore uh, uh, how real it can be and uh, so yeah that that was that was uh, something I did yeah, yeah so there's something to be said about how far you can take that sort of acting and performance um, I, I think I mentioned this in the uh, other episode with James and Alara. Mm -hmm. And let me know if you've done anything as sort of crazy as this. But um, it was it was a two-handed play. And uh, what they did is at the start of the play, they flipped a coin. And based on whether it was heads or tails, it decided what character they would play. So if it was heads, they'd play one character. And if it was tails, they would switch roles and play the opposite. Um, and there's a lot you can do with the crazier side of acting of being like having to spontaneously now be another character. Um, have you had any examples of where you've had to sort of shift between characters quite quickly and what that process is like? Uh, wow, I didn't have this like flipping the coin and 
not knowing <laughs> now what I'm going to perform if it's for mm. the audience. Um, but I did a lot of uh, plays for children, actually. And um, so it was adaptation of Red Riding Hood. Mm. So in Red Riding Hood, there were other characters added uh, from different stories. So, of course, yeah, there was a wolf, uh, but um, there was also the cat. Like, there were different characters coming. Um, so there I needed to change the characters a lot. And it's just an amazing opportunity for an actor, which I would definitely recommend to everyone if they can get this opportunity to do it. Because, um, uh, for example, like I was at some point um, a wolf, then grandma, yeah. <laughs> then the cat <laughs> in the same play. Wow. And of course, for grandma, then you have to find his voice. It's, it's not easy to play something that it's, who is not your age. Uh, then, of course, like to find some different voice and movement for the cat. Um, and then Wolf was um, like very different. He was negative kind of character. Uh, they made him... Uh, they, the, uh, the director wanted uh, him to be slightly aggressive and dangerous to make, it, make him... Um, to make the contrast uh so i really i really enjoyed this and it was crazy also behind the uh, scene um, or uh in the backstage um because one moment i i was uh, i was walking around um as a cat and then uh i came back i i leave the stage and i have like i don't even have a minute i have to and dress completely and uh, dress again for the grandma. That was like too too quick because it's so short, um, so, so short, so a short time for the next role. And then quickly, uh, I was the grandma. And once I was sharing, I once uh, we did this uh, performance many times, but at the beginning, I think it was the second one. It was so quick and it was already the cue when I'm entering for grandma. And I entered, and I realized I don't have the uh, glasses. <laughs> but and then in the character, I said, "Oh, grandma forgot the glasses," and the uh, audience was laughing. Like there were mainly children because that was entertaining. Grandma maybe would forget something because, and then I came back with the glasses, all within the character. Um, that was a very brave thing to do, and uh, you know. Other choice would be just to continue playing, which you, which would be also correct to do. Uh, but as long as you're in the character, well, you're you're just sort of adapting to whatever's happening on the stage, aren't you? Yes, yeah, you well, have to. And and spinning it onto the the film process side, mm -hmm. obviously, um, both of us have worked along, uh, have workshopped in in a classroom setting with uh, mm -hmm. with film director Tony Smith. Yes. Um, for a a scene that we were enacting. Yes. Um, within that workshop and that class setting, could you paint a picture of what it was like working with him, um, with a film director, mm -hmm. and um, what he asked you to do and how it went. Mm -hmm. So with Tony Smith, um, it was a really interesting, uh, the interesting class because you are learning uh, how to have, take the best shot and how to work with actors. And I am still a student. I'm still learning a lot about acting. And uh, I liked as well that he actually, you... I'm well we have to admit like we are training the patience as well so we had to be patient with each other because you're still learning with uh, with the uh, recording but we are also learning how we are acting on the on the camera so um, um, yes Tony uh, liked to um, help us actors to use our imagination and that's what he's I think teaching you as well like um, to give us some idea what's what's happening in the scene and um, um, what he wants, but not really to to uh, close your imagination or creative process and tell you like be sad. That's probably the worst thing you could do as director and like to just uh, direct your actor and like give them just you know now you are 
sad. <laughs> um, while this class um, allowed me to explore, and every um, during like few hours, I can't, I can't remember how long it was. Like I didn't, I forgot the time because it was, it was, it was about four hours. Okay, yeah, you <laughs> felt like two. <laughs> um, it was um, sort of layers uh, on layers. Like we would do the scene, but then. Uh, we would add something and um, so it was interesting scene because there was also movement involved it was a dance uh, dance scene and um, me and the partner uh, struggled uh, at first how to uh, say the line in right moment and how to do these movements but amazing thing that uh, then Tony said okay um, because I could dance a little bit of waltz and in the scene I actually needed to teach uh, the other uh, character how to waltz. So he said, okay, now we're not filming. Can you show, how would, uh, can you teach him? Like, how would you teach? And then I started just to do what I would do if uh, I was teaching. Yeah. And then I just used that for the acting, well, for the scene. So. Yeah. yeah, it's a very interesting creative process. Mm. We're going to be going back to Anna in just a moment to continue this discussion. Uh, but we've got a new section coming to the podcast. Um, we Last week on the show, we had Sammy Bacon. He was on the show talking about musicians that he loved from the year of 2019, exploring all the different albums. Nice. And we're introducing a new section where Sammy does a one-minute quick review of a track or an album that you should listen to. And I don't know what each one's going to be each week, but uh, he will be dropping in just a one minute uh, quick fire on what music you should be listening to. So here is the first ever quick fire suggestion of music from Sammy. Hi guys, Sammy Bacon here, coming at you with a, another album recommendation. This, uh, this week it is Stranger in the Alps by Phoebe Bridges. Phoebe Bridges is a singer-songwriter from America, and she makes this very... Um, in kind of indie folk rock kind of stuff with lots of very nicely laid instrumentation um you know clearly influenced by people like mark kozlek and Conor oberst of bright eyes um the album stranger in the alps deals with a lot of the themes i think you know happens when you turn 20 and start getting into 20 such as death friendship identity it's a very beautifully told album with phoebe bridges kind of tackling a lot of quite morbid topics as i said but i do think it is a fantastic album and a really good list if you're a fan of your indie rock and a fan of your kind of <laughs> tortured soul singer songwriters i guess i'd re really give it a listen so yeah stranger in the outs by phoebe bridges recommended 100 percent. give it a listen see you next time okay we're going to be going back to anna in just a moment to talk more about the acting process but do you have a story to tell on the subject if so, you can leave a comment below on the YouTube channel or get in touch at the My Generation podcast. That's over on Facebook. Um, and we'll be featuring comments over the next few episodes. We might even pass some of them on to Enna. So if you've got something to add to the conversation, let us know. We've had actors, so many actors on the podcast now, and all of them have something unique to bring, including Enna. So definitely get your thoughts and opinions in because we want to keep this conversation going. We're going to next be moving on to Local Impact, Anna. Uh, we're a very Kent-based show. So what I wanted to ask you firstly is um, if you're an up-and-coming actor in the area of Kent, what would you recommend people do to get involved? Okay. Um, first of all, well, we who are uh, Christchurch University students, we are lucky already that um, um, we some of our shows are open to public. So first... I will this with this way I would like to also invite people um to maybe um yeah just get get a little bit informed and um uh, try to see especially for example Canterbury Festival which is now like finished but for the next year um that's a festival which um puts uh which um yeah puts on the show some of the performances from the students here if you're not a student, if you are someone who is in Kent area, um, precisely I know the most about Canterbury, uh, we have Canterbury um, Shakespeare Festival. That's an amazing thing to do and I uh, was involved uh, uh, last summer. And um, yes, it's an amazing opportunity to do Shakespeare or um, 
there are some people also do, did adaptations um, and also to meet people like locals uh, because uh, anyone can be involved there are auditions but uh, there is a place for everyone and every role if you're not don't want to be on stage necessarily maybe you want to uh, help to with the uh, directing and there is also a possibility for for directors to apply and pitch what their ideas um, so that's a uh, summer uh, time when we perform but the process of rehearsals is much longer and there are many socials involved and uh, I met a lot of nice people there and yeah, yeah that's something I well, enjoyed. this episode comes out in about March time for 2020 when mm -hmm. people will be listening to this so the Shakespeare Festival will actually be getting to a little bit closer. Um, Eleanor who I mentioned earlier she was on the 10th episode of the show when we were when the show was in its infancy and um, she was a part of the Canterbury Shakespeare Festival and she directed part of it, I think. So, um, yeah. yeah, that's a great local impact and something you can do to get involved in Kent. Um, I just want to tease a few more topics we've got coming up before we come back to Anna to close off this week's episode of the show. Um, next week's topics, um, we're going to be having Lewis Kennedy on very soon. He is a freelance filmmaker. He's going to be the other side of the camera. He's a, he's a camera operator. He'll be talking through his experiences very soon. And Joe Finnegan, our returning podcast guest, he was on the Halloween special. He's going to be coming back and talking about passion projects. Uh, both myself and Joe left very uh, traditional retail jobs to set up passion projects in the year of 2018. And we both wanted to talk through what our experiences were like working for ourselves. So we've got a lot of variety of content coming up over the next few weeks. Um, but Anna, one question I love to ask everyone to sort of wrap up the podcast is... Um, what do you think you've learned by talking about your acting process here? Um, well, so when you reflect on what uh, are you doing, then you are more aware of it. So it helped me to um, be even more aware, like what exactly am I doing and have to share it. Because apart from uh, that I want to do acting, I would like to be able to lead the workshops myself. So that's one of the reasons I went for them. And um, I'm really glad to share what I'm doing, like process of acting and um, going for these workshops. Because um, then, yes, in the future, I'll, I'll be able uh, to speak even uh, better <laughs> and to share um, things I'm doing. Because, yeah, like it's basically like reflection on um, what are you doing so yeah <laughs> and where can people find you if they wanted to connect to you if they wanted to potentially work on you with projects okay so um, I have the YouTube channel where I put the last film so maybe you can uh, check um, the right audience that was the film um, which uh, students re made um, I have uh, LinkedIn or um, uh, yeah, there is a um, or my email. I I can share. I yeah, know. absolutely. Yeah. We can put all that in the description below. So yeah, Anna, yeah. if you send over some links to me, I'll get them into the description of this okay. podcast. And uh, obviously, we're we're recording this episode right at the tail end of 2019. Um, it comes out in in 2020, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, Anna, what are your aspirations for acting in the year of 2020? What would you like to see yourself doing? Hmm. Yes. Um. I would like to do some professional projects or I mean project, <laughs> um, that's something I, I really aspire to do. But for that, you always need a little bit of luck as well. Um, but I will definitely start applying and sending some of my headshots and um, trying to maybe find the agent because yes, I'm second year student of drama and I have one more year to go, but I'd like to try. Um, yeah, yeah, and um, continue to go for workshops to improve acting and have more experience, really. Lovely. We're going to be uh, closing off the episode in just a moment. 
But we've got uh, some more topics um, for the podcast. We'd love to have more people to be coming on to talk about. Um, so there are future topics um, we're looking for people to talk about. Um, we're revisiting the topic of collecting. We had Harry Monday, who you all know very well. Um, we had him on the podcast uh, talking about collecting. We talked about Lego and DVDs in the second episode of the My Generation podcast. That seems like a lifetime ago now, that uh, <laughs> second episode. Um, and uh, we'd love for you to come on and talk about any collections you've got. So if you've got a, a quirky, interesting, unique collection, um, then put your thoughts in the comments or contact the Facebook page at the My Generation Podcast. Uh, if you live in the area of Kent and you're between the ages of 18 and 35, as we'd love to have you on to talk about your story and what you do. And we also post to the Facebook page questions looking for podcast guests. Um, if there's certain things and topics that we'd like to come on and talk about, like the acting process, which will always come up as a as a future topic. But um, Anna, just to finalise the podcast, what um, advice would you have for up and coming actors who are um, just maybe a bit younger than yourself coming into your position? Okay. Um, um, well, and I want to think of something good, definitely. Mm, so I would say, uh, be open and try to put yourself in um, in new situations uh try to search for these workshops um i didn't i didn't mention i didn't describe what i did for the in the national youth film academy um so that was like london project like two weeks making the film that's something i would also advise because you're learning how to um yeah, have to act for the screen as well. So if someone is interested for film acting, uh, I know there is equivalent to it like um, 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 theater uh, academy, something like that in London as well. So there are some shorter courses um, to be involved with or local um, festivals. So anything is good practice, definitely good to keep that um, uh, kind of um, a routine and uh, to, to continue working on your acting skills, to use them, to do as much as you can because uh, that's preparing you for, uh, for your career, for something you, if you want to do that. And, or if it's just for fun, then <laughs> of course, uh, yeah, look for, for some communities which are making drama shows. And uh, you're part of the Drama Society as well, so you can always get involved there. Yes, yes, if you're a student here, uh, definitely uh, come for uh, to Drama Society. And this is my second year being part of uh, Drama Society. And yeah, so I really like to keep myself busy and um, to find uh, things to do with acting, so yeah. Yeah, you can always join that drama society. And now you've got lots of things to be doing to get involved in acting if you'd like to. Well, Anna, thank you for joining us today on the podcast. Yeah, thank you, Max. No worries. We've got so much new stuff coming up, but we'll definitely try and get you back on the podcast, Anna. That's cool. Yeah, I'll be glad to be back yeah, and, uh, <laughs> with find new out, stories. <laughs> yeah, find out what's been happening in 2020 with your life. Well, thank you very much for joining us. We've got a lot of new stuff coming up. We've got Lewis, Joe, some personal episodes from me, a load of great stuff coming up in the future of the My Generation podcast. Thank you very much for listening, and we will see you next week for the next episode of the My Generation podcast. <laughs>